Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 4, Part 1 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing facts about the laws of compensation or the analogy of reaping what is sown, and how compensation drives forgiveness and repentance. This session was recorded on 19th of September 2017 from 10.50 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Welcome everyone to session four in a series of discussions that I'm having with Jesus. Jesus is here with me again today. Mm -hmm. uh, in this series, we're talking about God's principles and laws pertaining to forgiveness and repentance. And today we're going to focus specifically on some areas relating to compensation and how God's laws operate in relation to compensation, because this has a lot of uh, repercussions and impact when it comes to the principles of forgiveness and repentance and how we engage with them. Yeah, so maybe what we need to do is just <clears throat> quickly introduce the fact that compensation is that principle of what you sow, you reap. Yes. And we'll be talking about that, the whole, con the whole concept of sowing and reaping uh, over the next few sessions, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah we will. Mm -hmm. We will. So we hope you're enjoying this series so far. We believe it's got a lot of relevance to everyone in their spiritual and emotional development. And yeah, I'll just briefly now review what we've talked about so far, and then we'll get into the discussion. So in review of God's laws of forgiveness and repentance, sessions one, two, and three, I'll just briefly mention what each of them covered. And we do recommend that you go back and watch this series from the beginning if you're just joining us now. Mm. So in session one, which we recorded on the 23rd of August, 2017, we focused a lot on some basic truths about forgiveness and repentance. And if you remember, we talked about how to establish God's truth about anything, the purpose of God's laws, and then we related God's laws of forgiveness and repentance all together mm. to try and introduce what we're all on about. Yes, because we needed to talk about the laws and talk about God's truth before we could start sort of discussing more detail about the subject of forgiveness and repentance. And, and in fact, we really haven't got to a full discussion of forgiveness and repentance even, even now, because we've had session one, as you say, which was all about introducing the concept of law and the concept of truth and how to determine those kind of things. We had a slight introduction to forgiveness and repentance, but we haven't gone into that in much detail. And so we, over the next two sessions after that, so session two, which was the session that we focused on, on I think it was the 5th of September, 2017. And uh, on that session, we discussed like the process of forgiving and uh, you know a bit more detail about the process of forgiving in particular and, and repentance and, and how, um, it's an emotional process, so that process of forgiveness and repentance. Yeah, to me, that was the session where we got to talk about, well, here's the truth, but what's the process? And we, what we glean from that is that it's largely a very emotional process. Yes. Yeah. Then we moved on to session three, which was the day later. So that was the 6th of September, yeah. 17. And there we started to look more at what is my personal emotional process? You know, if I relate it all now back to me, what's mm. it going to feel like and look like? And mm. we tried to hone in on some of those more personal elements then, didn't we? Yeah, and we also tried to examine sort of the concept of accidental versus intentional sin, sin. and whether there is such a thing as an accident in <laughs> God's universe even. We discussed that as well. Yeah, that's mm. right. Mm. So today, session four, we are looking at now at the laws of compensation. So these are different laws and principles, but they have a large implication upon forgiveness and repentance. Yes, and, and we decided we needed to do this because compensation obviously 
is all about how we how our our emotional response, our soul based response to either upholding or obeying God's laws or disobeying them and breaking them and and what happens to the soul and what happens to our life as a result of those things is very important to understand because both forgiveness and repentance and the refusal to forgive and repent have uh, compensatory effects upon our soul mm. which are which are important to understand for our happiness and for our for the rest of our life so so we thought we needed to have this sort of quite involved discussion which is going to take a number uh, probably at least three sessions and maybe even more um, where we're going to discuss this concept of of compensation so that so that we can see its relationship with forgiveness and repentance and and in fact without the law of compensation forgiveness and repentance would be null and void really so we need to understand compensation well before we can really grasp the full principles of forgiveness and repentance so that's a teaser we, we during the course of this discussion i need to pin you down as to why forgiveness and repentance would be null and void without compensation yeah that's right yeah yeah, mm. yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> Let's get started. Compensation and the analogy of sowing and reaping. <laughs> so let's now start our conversation about compensation. And we've said here in our um, heading that it's, there's an analogy of reaping and sowing that's commonly applied to or, what is compensation really, isn't it? Mm, mm. And uh, it's it, we'll use this analogy as we go through our discussion as well to help highlight different aspects of how compensation actually really does operate. Yeah, so obviously yeah. there's a lot more to it than just reaping and uh, sowing yeah. and then reaping. But yes. Because there, there are flow on effects of everything that we do and, and there's, as we'll find, ripple effects and all of these other kind of things that go on as well. So, you know, obviously the analogy of sowing and then reaping is, is a helpful way mm -hmm. of understanding the laws pertaining to compensation, but obviously it's not going to be complete without a full discussion of what, what those laws actually are and what they mean and how they operate and so forth. Yeah. yeah. Perhaps the best thing to do then is to start with just some very simple basic facts about compensation. Mm. So can we define now what compensation is? Yes, well, it's, a, it's an interesting question about what it is, what, you know, if we had to give a short summary of what compensation is. Um, basically, if you think about it, God, by giving us free will, has really made all humans self-responsible beings. But then there had to be some way to enforce self-responsibility upon the human. Otherwise, you wouldn't be a self-responsible being. Mm -hmm. And compensation is really the enforcing of responsibility upon the human for the human's actions and for the human's behaviour, their thoughts, their intentions, and their desires. So, so it's, it, at its very core level, it's about making the human responsible for their life yeah. and making them responsible for their choices and decisions, making them responsible for even how they think, but also how those thinkings and uh, how those thoughts and how those f and how the feelings within a person cause them to act and then not only uh, sort of correcting that if it's out of harmony with love but uh, by by some kind of penalty based system but also just a, a way of encouraging uh, or you could say discouraging unloving behavior they also needed to have a way of rewarding the loving behaviour, so gotcha. because otherwise compensation wouldn't be complete. You'd, it'd be all stick and no carrot, if you, <laughs> if you could call it that. So, so in a lot of ways, you could say compensation is like providing a carrot yeah. and a stick yeah. <laughs> in terms of training the human into becoming a more loving creature yeah. and therefore living in more harmony with the rest of the universe that God's created. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting you use the analogy of the carrot and the stick because that's the old analogy of the donkey, yes. you know, moving forward because there's a carrot in front or a stick behind mm -hmm. hitting it. But is it is compensation really something that does act upon what we referred to in the Paget messages as the animal side of our nature, like the more basic parts of our nature? 
Well, hopefully the human's a bit uh, more intelligent than a donkey. <laughs> Although, you well. know, sometimes you, when you look at what we do, yeah. sometimes that's a bit questionable. It Donkeys is. don't go to war, yeah. <laughs> except when forced to by humans. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's obviously things where we as humans, although we have quite a large degree of intelligence, we don't use our intelligence very wisely. And, and so, yes, uh, God obviously... When you say the animal part of our nature, yes, the physical body, as we've discussed in previous discussions, does have an animal side of itself, which is the physical creation of the human. Of the human. But here we're talking specifically the human would not exist without the soul connected to both the physical and spirit bodies. Yeah. So here we're talking more about the corrections that need to occur to the soul, because that's the everlasting part of the human. Gotcha. And uh, recently we did some conversations about that in the pageant, when we discussed a pageant message or two about how the soul receives divine love. And, and in, that mes in those messages, we referred to the three parts of the human, if you like, the, mm -hmm. the animal physical part of the human, the spiritual body uh, mm -hmm. of the human, and also the soul or the half of the soul that each of us are. And, and obviously, conversation has an effect on all of those things. It does have an effect on the physical body. Mm -hmm. It does have an effect on the spirit body. But more importantly, and, and more uh, like definitively, it has uh, an effect on the soul. It's yeah. the soul that God wants to either correct for its un unloving and disobedient behavior or reward for its loving and obedient behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically you're saying that there's a penalty and reward system going on and it's whether we're aware of it or not, it's happening, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, mm. which is sort of what I meant by the animal side of the nature. You know, it's not something we necessarily consciously engaged in, but it is occurring constantly. Yeah, yeah so I, I suppose you could say, though, even, even some of the most unreasoning humans <laughs> still do see, uh, you know, different compensator effects for what they do, obviously. Yeah. You know, it's, it's well known, for example, and it has been well known for thousands of years that if you engage in sexual immorality, for example, then you're probably going to get a venereal disease at some point, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, the only time that wouldn't be the case is if there, <clears throat> someone you've been engaging with sexually has or has had has engaged in immorality. Yeah. So, so, but either way, there's, there's this underlying knowledge that there are some results, physically at least, mm -hmm. for behaviour that we engage. If we eat too much, we get fat, for example. Yes. You know, if we drink too much alcohol, we're going to be drunk all the time and be yeah. pretty useless to society as a result. And if we take drugs all the time, then we're going to have a similar result and so forth. So, so obviously, you know, there, most people can see with, through physical actions in particular that there is a compensatory effect for behaviour they undertake. Yeah. So it's not like we're uneducated about the matter, <laughs> as most people would claim, yeah. but rather it's a fact, of, it's a day-to-day -day fact of life mm -hmm. that, that we, we do see compensation in everything we do. If we don't exercise, you know, we'll be unhealthy, you know, yeah. we know that. If we smoke, then there's, we, we get, we potentially will die a lot younger or, or, or have a lot of problems with our lives with regard to breathing and, and freeness of movement and so forth. And, and you know, heart disease and fats, uh, there's a direct association with all those things. And humans know all of these associations on the physical level. So yeah. it's not like we're unaware of the law of compensation in our day-to-day -day lives. That's not, not true at all. I think the bigger area, though, that is our problem is that we are not aware of the emotional and spiritual effects mm. of behaviour that's unloving. Mm. And this is what compensation also is a, to correct. So remember, compensation, as we just already said, has to correct the physical and the spiritual and the soul. Yeah. It's not just going to correct just the physical. And I find it quite amazing in a lot of ways that that we can see on the physical level that if you take a certain action that's out of harmony with love of your body, you could say you're going to reap a consequence that's going to be in harmony with that lack of uh, love of mm -hmm. your physical body. And we, we can see that. Most people on the planet can see that. But we don't take that analogy into our emotional and spiritual life. And yeah. that's where we run into a lot of trouble, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So let's hone in a little bit more then. 
basically you're saying it's there, there's really laws operating mm -hmm. um, that are basically defining that there's penalties and rewards and you mentioned these three levels physical spirit body and soul but it's even more refined than that isn't it it's mm -hmm. our um, as we've mentioned previously um, with how forgiveness and repentance operate all of God's laws are operating on our thoughts our emotions our intentions our desires uh, our and our physical actions so mm -hmm. so um, the laws could you talk more about that I suppose yeah obviously um, the first thing is that when we act in harmony with love or you could say when we obey the law which is exactly the same same it's saying exactly the same thing yeah when we obey god's law or we act in harmony with god's definition of love we are through our thoughts intentions words desires actions and so forth we are rewarded or compensated in a rewarding way yep. for those particular behave that particular behavior mm -hmm. so that's the first aspect of compensation the second is the converse of that obviously and that is that if we decide to, if we have thoughts words actions intentions or desires behavior in other words that's out of harmony with love or we could say it in disobedience to god's laws then we are going to be penalized in some way or let's put it more succinctly corrected in some way by the operation of the law now the when we look at the laws of love involved here it's laws that relate to love of self as well as laws that relate to love of others mm -hmm. and laws that relate to love of environment and laws that relate to that love of god as well so so yeah. it's our whole life yeah in other words and, and what I see a lot of people doing is only looking or reflecting upon the law of compensation when it comes to loving others. Mm -hmm. But that, that there is a large part that they ignore by not loving themselves mm. in that regard. Or they focus on love of self, in other words, become quite self-oriented or selfish without any love of others. Or they have both of those two things, or they think they do, but there's no care for the environment. Mm -hmm. Or there's also no love of God, no desire for God, no, no relationship with God. So every one of these aspects of life, the law of compensation is attempting to either reward or correct. Yeah. That's its underlying goal. And we need to see that it involves every aspect of our life. It's, and it's not just how we treat other people. It's also how we treat ourselves, how we treat God, how we treat the environment, how we treat animals, birds, creations, you know, uh, the earth itself and all those things. All of these things, the law is in operation with. Mm -hmm. Every single one of those things is measured and we are, either, we are compensated for in some way, whether it be correctively or rewardingly yeah. based upon our loving or our unloving behaviour, depending on which one we engage. Mm. Mm. And so essentially, this is like a big feedback mechanism, isn't it? Mm -hmm. To help us to identify what's in harmony with law and what's out of harmony with law. Yes, if we didn't have the feedback mechanism, you, you can imagine uh, like you'd go ahead and take an action, not, not knowing what the, whether the outcome was going to be positive or negative. If, we, if, the, if the outcome was not predictable based upon the action, or the outcome was not predictable based upon the behavior mm -hmm. then it would be impossible to determine what's right and what's wrong and what's good and what's bad and what's good uh, what's loving and what's unloving mm -hmm. and so that you know and and people claim that that's the case that it is impossible it's not of course because of these laws of compensation that are that god has made which actually give us this direct feedback mechanism about what is loving and what isn't loving. Mm -hmm. and, and many of these feedback mechanisms work instantly, as we'll find out later. Others work uh, over a period of time. And, and we can measure from these feedback mechanisms whether our behaviour is in the right direction for our own happiness, but also in the right direction for the happiness and welfare of others and the environment itself. Mm -hmm. So. It, it's a great way of determining like what is the right thing to do here yeah and and without the law of compensation it would be very very difficult to determine mm -hmm. what is right and what is wrong 
given the fact that we're living in a world that is uh, very much uh, opinionated or, or has a definite str uh, stream of desire, if you like, towards the wrong yes. um, or towards self-interest or selfishness, yeah. it would be very, very hard to determine what is right and what is wrong unless there was some over-governing over, uh, principles yep. that God had made to, to govern us and make sure that we become self-responsible and we, and we, become, we come to know if you like, what God believes is right and wrong mm. or what God believes is loving and unloving. Mm. And really what you're saying, that so that we come to enjoy the benefits of being self-responsible. Mm. Like true happiness comes from the proper exercise of your will. And if you're a fully self-responsible being, you, you can be far happier than if you make everybody else responsible for your life, obviously. And so if we go back to the main purpose of the law of compensation, its main purpose is to enforce self-responsibility. Yeah. And it does that perfectly. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you. Just, I'd like to ask you a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. How does compensation and the principles and laws of compensation differ from cause and effect and the principles and laws pertaining to cause and effect? Well, there are there, the major difference is this. The laws of cause and effect apply to all matter, inanimate, inanimate and animate. In other words, all matter itself is governed by the laws of cause and effect, as well as humans and living creatures and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that, that is, you could say the law of cause and effect is an underlying principle, which does also govern the law of compensation. Like uh -huh. it, it yeah. is involved, but yeah. the law of compensation is specific to the human. Uh -huh. And the reason why it's specific to the human is because humans have free will. And therefore, there has to be some kind of correction for the underlying desire that they have to take an action. Whereas the rest of the universe doesn't have desires mm -hmm. with regard to actions. Mm -hmm. They are driven totally, in the case of inanimate structures, they are driven totally by the laws of physics and mathematics. In the case of animals and so forth, they, there is this additional part of the need to eat and the need to procreate and so forth in order to survive. And But these kind of things are not uh, desires that they are consciously aware of and can make decisions about. Mm -hmm. The human is the person who is, has the ability to make these conscious aware, consciously aware choices. And as such, the human has to have more law applied to it in order to uh, correct its unloving behavior. Uh -huh. whereas, whereas there's no need to correct anything else in the universe because it always ha happening basically governed by laws of mass physics and, and other laws of science, including laws relating to our biology. Uh -huh. And these particular laws, which are all working still in harmony with love, God created them still in harmony with love, they apply to every creature, whether mm -hmm. they're human or non-human, and also to every type of matter, right down from the smallest particle to the largest masses in our universe, right? Which are, you know, much larger masses than the ones we see, you know, mm. like things like black holes and things like that, uh, and dark matter and all these other areas are also governed by the laws of cause and effect. Whereas, whereas the law of compensation is specific to the human soul, it is going to govern, in addition to the law of cause and effect, yeah. it is going to govern the human soul and, mm -hmm. and help that soul come to understand God's definition of love and help that soul come to be a self-responsible being. Okay, thanks. Mm. Mm. Let's talk about why God created compensation. So can you give us just a short summary? I'm sure there's many more reasons <laughs> than you're able to cover, um, or perhaps even more than you know at this moment, because it's hard to know the inf in the infinite capacity of God. But the, just some of the reasons why God created compensation. Yeah, so here it's probably appropriate that we just list some of those reasons. The very first one we've already mentioned, which is self-responsibility, yep. enforcing self-responsibility upon the human. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Without the glory of compensation, self-responsibility would not be enforced. 
Mm-hmm. So, so it's a very important part of the law, of the law, why we have compensation. It also educates humans about what is ethical and moral, doesn't it? So God's, if we define morality as God's definition of what's love. That's how we can begin to engage in this education process, isn't it? Yes, in some ways, it, like if, you know, as we'll learn later, there is a way that God can tell us truth, but let's say we're ignoring that. Mm-hmm. And there's also a way God can give us love, but let's say we're also ignoring that. Yes. So let's say we're ignoring God altogether, <laughs> how do we determine what is right and wrong? What is in our best interest and what isn't? Well, the law of conversation is the thing that does that for us. Mm-hmm. So, so without the law of conversation, we wouldn't know what is ethical or morally right or wrong, um, particularly when we're disconnected from God and can't hear God and, and we can't feel God, then, then basically we're left to the law to determine something. And without the law of conversation, we wouldn't be able to determine what is right and what is wrong morally or ethically. Yeah, I always marvel at the many avenues God has to to educate us. Mm. It's just incredible. Yeah. 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 So another reason really is that God um, has a capacity to actually correct immoral and unethical behaviour, mm. doesn't he? So even we have this free will opportunity to do what we want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But if that is unethical and unloving and immoral, then there is a correction process that's going to happen. And that seems loving to not only others, but to ourselves. Yes, it's loving to yourself because you, it's a bit like um, you could say if we put it in its really uh, raw state, imagine if uh, we didn't understand what fire did to the human body. Mm-hmm. We, we would touch hot things frequently. And if we didn't have some kind of feedback mechanism that gave us some pain that said actually you are now exceeding the design of this body. This body this body can't cope with that kind of heat for a long period of time without destroying it, its cell structure. And if you keep, you know, burning your body like this, so you'll end up with no body to use, you know? Yes. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, that's what the law of compensation also does with regard to moral and ethical issues, mm-hmm. as well as physical issues mm-hmm. as well, but, but particularly with moral and ethical issues. It tells us lo- lo- what is fire to us, what, what burns us, what's going to harm us, either in the short or long term, yeah. and therefore what we should stay away from. But also it's the converse as well, the reward part. So, the, you know, you've mentioned the corrective part, but there's also the reward part, and yeah. that is basically the complete opposite of that let's reward the behavior which is in harmony with love that is in the uh like in the um framework of god's definition if you like of what love should be for the human yeah let's reward that and let, yeah. let's ensure that there's there's not only this uh corrective consequence but also a, a rewarding consequence for loving behavior and so, so conversation, if you didn't have conversation, that wouldn't occur at all. So essentially, you're really saying that it's a way that we can learn how to be happy and learn what causes pain and suffering, not just for ourselves, but for the human race collectively. Yes. Now, and also there's this beautiful balance in the law of compensation, isn't there, that what causes happiness for me must also mm. not cause misery for you. Mm-hmm. The compensatory, the, the laws of compensation determine that if something causes my happiness, uh, from God's perspective, it should not cause your unhappiness at the same time. It should either cause your happiness or at least be neutral yeah. for you. And and this is a beautiful thing about the law because because without that aspect to it, we'd be so focused on our own selfish happiness without seeing how we destroy the happiness of others. Mm. And and that's something you know that that we we need to see quite clearly. Also, with regard to that, we are frequently right now doing things which destroy the happiness, not for people around us right now, but for, for future generations yes. and destroy their happiness. And, and if we're not careful on the planet, we'll end up with a shortage of water and a shortage of food and so forth. And this is all the ways that we are right now taking actions and decisions that are out of harmony with love for the next generation of mm. people. And, and the laws of compensation also correct that. Mm. So it's a, the beautiful thing about the law of compensation is, a, is that it's about balance and harmony, equality in, in, in the environment and between humans. And, and so without the law, 
of compensation, you wouldn't have a measure of equality. Well, I yes. would be only focused on my own happiness and my own uh, desires, and I would go, well, you have to fend for yourself. And <laughs> even if my happiness causes your unhappiness, then that's fine, is, is what I'd probably normally do. But with the law of compensation, you start saying, well, actually, that's all not true. You know, the, mm -hmm. for what, has to, what is good for one, one person must also be good for other people. Otherwise, it's not good for even for the one. Yes. Mm. And throughout this discussion, in, our, in this session and the next couple of sessions, we'll talk about why it often appears that people can get away with it without there being mm. any compensatory effects. No, the reality is they can't. They can't. They can't yeah. at all. And, and in fact, the wheels of compensation, if you like, the grinding machine grinds to very, very small particles, really, of, of emotion and feelings and thoughts and so forth. Yeah. And so it's important for us at some point to recognise that everything is measured. Mm. So really, this is a, a correction of injustice mm -hmm. on God's part. Yes, it's a creation of justice. Mm. God wants everything to be equal and just. And so, yeah. you know, obviously compensation has to correct injustice, but it also has to compensate for injustice. So, so that's the beautiful thing about it too, is that things that have unjust that have happened here on earth are often in the spirit world corrected by rewards, compensatory rewards that occur because you put up with this injustice mm. and so forth. So, yeah, there's so many, there's a, if you examine the whole of the human existence, not just the earth life, you see all these beautiful things that happen as a result of the functioning of the compensatory laws. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And um, another part of it is that well, essentially what you've outlined already is that God's governance, God is governing through this, through the operation of the laws governed by these principles. Yeah, there's a common thought, if you like, that uh, humans, by give, being given the gift of free will, now should be able to do anything they want. And, and that's not logical because mm -hmm. obviously whoever created the universe, in this case, obviously God, but if you think about it, whoever created would create the universe. If you create something, you you want to govern how it's used, used mm. or utilized. It's like a, a people on earth create a car and then they give you an instruction manual of, of what, what it can cope with, you know, what it can do. And the the uh, if you if you exceed the design of the of the vehicle uh, through pranking it driving it into a brick wall or whatever and um, then obviously the, it's not going to last very long and if you don't service it or you don't fuel, refuel it and so forth it's not going to work at all and so forth so so you can see um, in regards to anything humans create we always provide some kind of framework mm -hmm. upon which to govern the operation of that piece of equipment. And, and people don't then logically apply the same rule to God. If God created the universe, then God's providing a framework where God wants the survivability of the universe. He wants the universe to be able to be stable. He wants it to be able to support life and so forth. And, and without the law of compensation, humans could take actions that, that are so extreme without any consequence that would end up, in many cases, destroying even things like the whole Earth, for example, where mm -hmm. seven or eight, seven plus billion people reside at the moment. So uh, this is why it's so important that um, God made the law so that, so that you know, the, the survivability of everything is maintained as well. Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, and so is there anything else you'd like to add about compensation, just briefly about why God created it? Well, I think uh, compensation, it needs to be stated that compensation also supports growth of things that are loving, not just mm. the uh, creation of the things that are loving, but the growth of yeah. things that are loving. And it also supports the destruction of things that are unloving. Yes. So not just penalizing you for the creation of the unloving thing, mm -hmm. but compensation also is God's attempt to, uh, and I say attempt because we've still got free will, you know, yes. we can still maintain can uh, still use our will still to use keep will, maintaining a thing. But God will, and God's laws will, attempt to destroy everything that we create that's out of harmony with love. Mm. You spoke a lot about that in the 2016 assistance groups, didn't you? Yes. So it's important that people un understand that um, it's, it's not just about correction and reward, but it's also about when a thing, how can a thing grow and so how can growth be sustained 
and why are things destroyed? Mm -hmm. Like these kind of questions are all answered with the law as well. Things are, things are grow because the law of compensation allows them to grow mm -hmm. and it promotes their growth and things decay or are destroyed because the law of compensation needs to destroy them. God's always attempting to destroy any creation that's out of harmony with the love in God's universe. Mm. 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 So there's quite a lot there as to why God did it. You know, that's <laughs> yep. just a short list. Yep. Uh, obviously, we could cover a lot more things, but, um, you know, this isn't going to be an exhaustive conversation about compensation, but hopefully it's given people a bit of an idea of why God created compensation. And I think the, the real and um, substantial benefits of the creation, of course, everything God creates has benefits, but compensation is one of those things that people often don't feel is beneficial. Yes, and, and there's all sorts of reasons for that. But and I suppose the primary one is that people feel pain and suffering for the unloving actions they take, and then they don't align them with the fact that they've broken the laws of involving compensation uh, for some, some for some reason. Mm -hmm. And instead, they try to blame it on some other other factor. So it's very important that they understand that God, as we stated in our very first session, God's laws have all been created for our benefit and our happiness. And the law of compensation has been specifically created for our benefit and our happiness. And our happiness. Mm. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about how compensation works. So just now you've explained how God um, is basic God's purpose in creating compensation was to correct unloving behavior and reward loving behavior. Mm -hmm. How does that actually happen? Mm, it's a good question. As we uh, mentioned in our assistance groups about understanding God's loving laws in 2016, we talked about the fact that every human energy system is uh, mathematically quantifiable. Mm -hmm. It's very important to understand that that's a fact. So well, that means that every thought we have, every feeling we have, every desire, intention that we have, every action we take, every word we speak creates flows of energy. And every one of these energy systems is able to be mathematically measured, mm -hmm. right? And every, every one of them is based upon mathematics and is able to be mathematically measured and quantified. So what that means then is that, that firstly, to, for the law of compensation to work, every human energy system had to be able to be quantifiable. Mm -hmm. And so God created uh, humans with the ability to, to have flows of energy and each one of those energy systems is quantifiable by God's laws. In other words, it's measured by God's laws and, and in, in terms of quality and quantity. And all of those things are measured. Firstly, that has to happen before the law of compensation can actually work. And essentially you're saying that there's an energy attached to, or there is energy inherent in everything about us, isn't there? Again, we'd mention yeah. the thoughts, words, actions, emotions, desires. You know, now scientists may and and uh, you know the medical profession may argue my point at this stage, but mm -hmm. but they know from their own measurement of the body, for example, that the body is made up of atomic structure in the end, and there, and therefore is full of energy in operation all the time. Now, why would it not therefore make sense? that everything that the body and the human mind and the human soul can produce, which mm -hmm. is flows of energy, thoughts, information, all of that is also energy that is quantifiable. Why, why would that not be the case? Yes. So it makes logical sense that it's all mathematically quantifiable and, and therefore a, a law can operate upon it. Mm -hmm. So God's not there arbitrarily making decisions going, oh, did, what did this person do? And, how did this person function and what did they, how did they react there and how did they react here? And, oh, I keep a little ledger for that <laughs> <laughs> and say, you know, oh, because he did this and that, that's what I'm going to do. It's, it's not like that at all. God's created a law that is consistent, just like the law of gravity and any other law that governs the human and also any other matter. And these laws are able to measure the human's energy systems right down to the thoughts that occur inside the person. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's talk about then what happens <coughs> when that energy system is assessed, if you like, mm -hmm. by, to the law. Be, by the law mm -hmm. to be loving. Yes. What happens? 
Well, now there's a whole heap of positive, you could say, or, or rewarding comp compensatory effects that mm -hmm. are impl imposed upon the, those things. In other words, they are now all assisted to grow as we've already discussed. So me, if I have a if I have a loving thought or intention or action, I'll yep. be assisted to grow, you mean? You'll be assisted to grow, but yep. your thought that's loving will also be assisted to grow. Mm -hmm. It will have an effect on other people's thinking if it's expressed yep. and cause them to potentially grow as well. So, so it's, it's supporting me to accomplish the goal of the intention. Yes, yep. yes, and not only your goal, but also <laughs> how that affects other people because of you sharing the goal that you mm -hmm. have that's in harmony with love and so forth. So, so you, you can see with the reward, it's not just reward for to you for your behaviour, but actually your good behaviour rewards society mm. as well. Mm -hmm. it, it has a beautiful effects, positive effects on society. Mm -hmm. it, it helps uh, society maintain loving, a loving cohesiveness, if you like, unity. Yeah. Uh, without without you operating in harmony with the law, that wouldn't be the case. Mm -hmm. So so the laws of compensation not only reward your personal behaviours, you know your, your thoughts, words, intentions, actions, desires, doesn't only reward that for you. Mm. It rewards anybody hearing those things or or listening to those things or acting upon those things in harmony with your intentions and desires that rather were loving yep. as well. Yep. So, so it has a positive benefit to society, not just to the individual. Mm -hmm. And and this is all a part of the compensatory, the positive, if you like, compensatory effects, the rewarding compensatory effects of living in harmony with the law. Mm. And the sum total of all that means that I grow, I become more happy. Uh, not only you grow, do you grow, <laughs> yeah. but the world around you will grow. Mm. Not only will you be happy, but the people who are affected by you will be happy, mm -hmm. right? So it's not it's not just you. It's yeah. your environment will be happy as well, you know. Yes. And of course, you bring happiness to God as well in that place, you know, mm -hmm. because you're living in harmony with law. You're happy, and God is naturally happy that His children are happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's a whole heap of uh, results, if you like, of you living in harmony with the law of compensation. And living and living in harmony with the law, with all of God's laws, and and it's not just about your current situation; it's about your future too. Yeah. Your future is guaranteed to be happy because remember, we haven't discussed yet in detail, but remember, the concept is what you sow now, you may reap later. later. So so you you know you might sow some things now and not see a large benefit for those particular things at this point in time, but in time under the, the guidance of the law, mm -hmm. those things will be rewarded because they were in obedience to law or harmonious with God's love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So then if we look at that in the converse, mm -hmm. when, when something is deemed by law to be unloving, mm -hmm. what occurs? Well, the, the same thing occurs in reverse, if you like, as what, for what we just mentioned. So, so if you do something that's unloving, now not only are you affected in a in a corrective way you know to, to correct this unloving behavior you will have some pain and suffering associated with your unloving action but people in the environment around you will also have some pain and suffering associated with your unloving action mm -hmm. and this teaches us things like that we're all related to each other we can't we're not all acting in a vacuum you yeah. know we we are affecting everything mm -hmm. around us we're even affecting the the environment in which we live and we need to, if we're truly intelligent beings, we need to come to understand all that. Yeah. And, and the law of compensation helps us come to understand mm -hmm. all that through its corrective action. Yeah, so it, it's acting to then stop me from achieving my goal in my unloving state. Yes, because it doesn't want you to achieve a goal that's <laughs> yeah. unloving for yeah. the rest of the universe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I, presumably that um, corrective action is imposed upon anyone else who takes up my unloving idea. Yes, that's right. It, it, yeah. it has the same effect on them. But not only that, um, whatever they decide to do unlovingly as a result of your idea 
will be also attributed to you. So mm -hmm. you will feel the extra pain of how you influenced people yeah. to be unloving. Yes. And, and also the environment will have a negative consequence on it. If you've chosen to do things that damage the environment, like so eating meat and other things like that, yeah. you will see these things reflected in the environment. Mm -hmm. and, and those reflections back at you will create pain and suffering, not just for you, but also for other people in the in the world as well. Yeah. And and those other people, hopefully, if they see you're doing the wrong thing, will now also feel like they have to correct you. <laughs> <laughs> and that that is a natural consequence of the of the law of compensation working. Mm -hmm. If if a whole group of people see that one person is acting in their in, in without in self interest and without their interest, mm -hmm. and it's not ethical or it's not just or it's not equal, mm -hmm. then that group of people naturally are going to have something to say about that. Yeah. And that's also a part of the law of compensation at work. So, so this helps the individual start to see, again, the same kind of principles, but in a negative sense. Mm -hmm. So they say, I'm equal. Every time I act like I'm not equal with others, there's a compensatory effect. Yeah. They see that I, everything should be just. Every time I'm not just, mm -hmm. there will be a compensatory effect and so yeah. forth. Yeah. And so this helps us to see there's a reward still for the positive behaviour yeah. and a compensatory effect or the, a correction for the negative behaviour. Yeah. And when you talk about the rewards and the penalties or the comp negative compensatory effects, these things are, um, there's a couple of dimensions to that, isn't there? Like some of it is immediate upon me, upon mm -hmm. my soul, mm -hmm. the happiness, or the pain or the pleasure. Um, but that's only one factor, isn't it? Yes. There's, it's sort of operating in multifaceted, multifactorial ways. Yes, because yeah. you, you can't sort of expect to take an action right now. Uh, the laws of cause and effect mean that that action might have motivated or caused other people to take actions and so forth. And so, so the law of compensation measures all of the flow on, the ripple effects, if you like, yes. of your actions and behaviour. And so we need to talk about that at some point, don't we, about the yep. ripple effect of our behaviour. Yep. So, so we need to come to understand that the law of compensation not only corrects our right now action, it's also going to bring future results based mm -hmm. on the right now action. Mm -hmm. we, we can't expect that somehow we go, oh, I'll go and do this and I'll go and do it. And then all of a sudden I go, oh, I shouldn't have done that. But your action's already in motion now. Yes. It's already going to have, if, if it was an unloving action, it's already going to have unloving consequences. Now you can attempt to reverse it as well as you're able and that there, there will be positive rewards for you doing so. Yes. But at the end of the day, you can't expect the entire thing to disappear mm -hmm. unless uh, you've done some major things to correct the actual original inception of the of the unloving action. Yeah. And and this is the beautiful part of the law too. It helps you see the relationship between cause and effect. So as we talked about earlier, animals don't need to see the relationship between cause and effect and matter doesn't need to see the relationship. It just acts in a harmonious to the laws of mathematics and physics. Humans do need to see the relationship mm -hmm. because we are free will beings. We, we, have, we, have the, so we have the autonomy yes. and therefore we also need to have the responsibility mm -hmm. for the decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's so important that the compensatory effects have to operate upon the soul in order to correct anything that is demonstrably going to harm any single other being or creature in the universe needs mm. to, you need to know at some point and you need to, as an intelligent being, surely you'd want to know. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But if we just talk again about the immediate effects, mm -hmm. uh, so this is happening uh, immediately that I have a, a loving intention, desire, action, emotion. Mm -hmm. I have an immediate reward in my soul. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, if it's unloving in nature, uh, there's an immediate painful effect on my soul. Yes. Now, is this, so from our notes, we've written um, compensation will measure and include the future effects of one's behaviour upon myself. Mm -hmm. So, suffer, I'll experience suffering, others and the environment. So, this is crucial here, this, the future effects. So uh, is compensation measured as if my outcome was achieved mm -hmm. in my idea, like, oh, I want to go and 
<laughs> burn down that field of trees, but I don't, act, some, something else happens. I still have the desire and the idea and I want to do it, but some other factor limits me. Mm -hmm. Is compensation measured as if the whole field was burnt down? It's very close to as if. Mm -hmm. um, when I say very close, obviously burning it down yes. compared to just thinking about burning it down, burning it down has far more negative consequences on the environment mm -hmm. than just thinking about burning it down does. But you are compensate your soul is measured as if you did want to burn it down and you've desired to burn it down. But obviously there are a number of restrictions that are now upon the compensatory effect because you didn't burn it down mm -hmm. and therefore it didn't have the negative effect on the environment. Yes, so <clears throat> this is where I wanted to try and delineate uh, for the viewers between if the, f so the immediate impact of the negative uh, compensation Mm -hmm. is is upon me mm -hmm. um, but if I had have burnt down the field for example then there's other compensatory effects that stretch out over time mm -hmm. loss of wildlife loss of um, potentially loss of sustenance air water for humanity all of those things mm -hmm. so the all of that pain and suffering can happen w may happen in the future and I may have been a part of creating that, and that pain and suffering I will naturally experience as time progresses, but the attribution, attribution mm. of that potential or predictable pain and suffering is upon my soul immediately. Is that a correct analysis? Yeah, but as I said, it's not the complete amount because you didn't right. do it. Because you didn't actually make it happen. That's right. And yeah. so therefore, it, it can't, you, God doesn't, God does take actions as more serious than just your thoughts, obviously. Yeah. But in many cases, we're, we're only limited to, for doing something based on law. In other words, we're for afraid. That's the only thing that stops us. Or, so, so, for example, yeah. um, the average person won't go and steal, but, uh, but for many of them, it's not because they have an internal feeling of ethics about stealing. Mm -hmm. It's because they might get caught and punished <laughs> yes. for stealing. Yeah. And that's the only thing stopping them. Yes. So they are still, from God's laws, ju are judging them as if they are wanting to steal yeah. and that they have stolen, but there's yet, they've yet to take the action, mm -hmm. if you like. It's the same with adultery or, or mm -hmm. the sa same with any of the, even the, uh, the example you gave with your environment. Mm -hmm. the, God's laws are still attributing all of the results with the exception of the result that the action would have had. So can we delineate that then from, say, uh, I want to go and burn down the field, but I know it's against the law and I'll probably get in trouble so I don't do it. That's scenario one. Scenario two, I want to go and burn down the field. I go out there to burn down the field or I'm getting, making preparations to burn down the field. Someone takes out a court restricted, says, no, you can't do that and, mm -hmm. and enforces like a physical restriction upon my ability. Mm -hmm. So scenario two. So in scenario two, there's a lot more compensatory effects going on, isn't there? Of because course. it's not m any part of my soul-based will that is preventing the action. I'm sorry, I don't understand the statement. <laughs> sorry, th there's no, if it was down to me, it would happen. But someone else's will, someone else's actions have come in to impose a limitation someone on me. Someone had to place a restriction on you. Yes, yeah. whereas in scenario one, no, I'm my will and desire is getting a bit jumbled up and I'm actually limiting my... Your own action. action. Yeah. So one is self-corrective. Yep. To a, to a degree, you're not corrected the cause yet. Uh -huh. The reason why you want to do it in the first place is not corrected, yeah. which, which the compensatory laws will demand at some point you yeah. to correct. Yeah. Uh, they will correct those particular things at some point. Yeah. But at this stage, when you're in scenario number one, you are in the place where you've decide, you're thinking about it, you feel like you want to do it, but there's things that are stopping you from actually yeah. going ahead Within and doing yourself, it. yeah. Whether that be law or yeah. just not having the time or the fact that you've, <laughs> you're in a wheelchair and you can't do it yeah. or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of physical, potential physical restrictions that you could have under those, in, in that scenario. Yeah. 
And and so it, it be, God's laws will be acting upon now your desire mm -hmm. that triggered the thought to do it. So mm -hmm. so God's laws are trying to correct that mm. as it, as if you've already done it. Yeah. Uh, but but you've not taken the action, and therefore the other compensatory effects that would have kicked into gear when you started to take the action yes. are not a part of the compensation yes. you have to pay. Yes. In scenario two you've started to take an action. In other words, you've acted upon the thoughts and the feelings that you had, the desires you had that were out of harmony with love. So now, not only have the original, do the original thoughts and feelings need to be corrected, Yes. but now the actual action also needs to be corrected. And on top of that, you need to pay the penalty for what that action may result in. Would have resulted in, actually. Yes, yeah. yes, would have resulted in if somebody didn't place a restriction upon you. Yes. And then, of course, there's a third scenario, which you didn't mention, which is actually you go ahead, take the action, and no one restricts you. Yeah. And, of course, under those circumstances, you're going to have to bear the full consequence of every compensatory yeah. law that you've broken and every one of God's laws that you've disobeyed. Yeah. And I suppose I think about that a lot in the converse, when there's a loving intention or action mm -hmm. and I don't act on it because I'm just a bit afraid or, you know, I'm a bit lazy that day, a bit angry about something else and I just withdraw from it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to receive much compensatory reward for my loving thought or action because it's not really coming to fruition within me. Well, the interesting thing, though, is God's laws can measure whether you are going to take the action or not. Yeah. So the, God's laws, remember, it re measure the intensity of the energy system. And the intensity of the energy system is all based around your passion and desire to take the action. Yeah. So if you just have a thought, oh, I'd like to do that, but it's not a very motivating thought mm -hmm. then obviously there's not much of intense desire in you to do yes. it and and while it's a lovely thing that you had the thought yeah. at the end of the day god's laws are going to measure it based on the intensity of your desire to do it if you had an extreme intense desire to do it and you went ahead to try to do it but got it blocked here and circumvented By other there and, wills. and prevented yeah. through all sorts of different things from doing it then god's laws will definitely measure it as if you had done it yes and and all the compensatory effects that would have flowed on from you doing it are given to you as well so it, it just depends upon the energy system the intensity <laughs> uh, in, so you could say the quantity and the quality of yeah. the energy system the thought the word the deed the action the intention the desire the quality and quantity of those things mm -hmm. will determine the outcome of how the law of compensation operates upon you Yes. Mm. And this is why you re you refer to it as very finely grinding because it, mm. you know it's, it's not a big broad brush strokes thing it's no. quite it's quite fine. Very finely yeah. tuned. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And all of this is happening whether we want to be aware of it or not. Exactly. It? <laughs> exactly. Obviously if you allow yourself to become aware of it you can uh, certainly assist your life and become happier quite quickly. Yeah. Uh, if you remain uh, in a desire to, rem if you have a desire to remain ignorant, then of course your happiness will be delayed by yeah. significant, it's not time mm. periods sometimes. As we mentioned, um, you have to have, you, like right from the outset in this discussion, we've said that the average person on the planet is aware of the law in operation, particularly physically. Yeah they know that certain actions always have certain types of consequences so they know the law exists they just refuse to apply it to their spiritual and emotional life mm. which is where we receive the worst amounts of corrective pain and suffering yeah. because we're refusing to see how the law operates in our spiritual and emotional life rather than just examining how it operates in our physical life mm. 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 Yeah, and the whole system is designed to help us to learn about this very process, isn't it? To understand what makes us happy mm -hmm. and what makes us unhappy mm. at the deepest levels. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Just a couple of follow-up points that we had here in our notes mm -hmm. that are worth a mention, I think. Because it's something that people often get angry at God about, um, that God doesn't remove the effects of my behavior uh, of any human's behavior no and so often people get angry at god oh you know uh, this terrible affliction has happened in my life 
but if that's the result of other people's actions and desires or my own, then God's not going to remove that, is he? Because... Well, again, it does depend on what you're speaking about specifically. But if we, if we analyse why God would not choose to remove effects without there being other laws engaged, it's probably a better way of saying it. Because there are other laws, and the laws of forgiveness and repentance actually have certain operations when engaged a certain way that can cause the removal of, of the actual effects if we so engage the laws properly. Yeah, we took a lot you about know, that. So, you know, that, yeah. that is something that happens. But let's say we don't engage those laws <laughs> and we can't just say, oh, you know, isn't this terrible? I'm getting this effect now. You know, for, for example, I'm eating meat and the world around me is getting deforested and we all get up in arms because of the deforestation, but we're all eating meat. There's an example of wanting somebody else to fix what we're actually doing, mm -hmm. what we're contributing to. You know, if you want to, if you're a true environmentalist, mm -hmm. you will not eat meat. Mm -hmm. It's quite clear on the planet that the destruction of the planet, a large part of the destruction of the planet is occurring to, to keep meat production in, you know, in high levels. And if, if you saw, if you were, if you were clear enough could see that, you would never, never, ever eat meat just if you were an environmentalist, mm -hmm. right? So any environmentalist who says that uh, who's still a meat eater obviously isn't a true environmentalist from God's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> and their, their underlying um, desires are insincere because they're not seeing the true relationship between cause and effect. Now, God's not going to make the environment pretty for you mm -hmm. just because you ask God to make it pretty for you. God's going to say, well, no, you're the one destroying the environment. When are you going to stop? If I just provide you with more pretty environments, you'll just go ahead and destroy those too. And if you don't see the relationship between the destruction of the environment and your own action, then we've got a problem, right? That's what God's trying to say to us. So what we need to do is come to see, well, no, if I choose to eat meat, I'm going to destroy, I'm going to participate in destroying the environment. That's my relationship in the example I've given. Mm. And... I need to come to see that so that I can correct my behaviour and stop eating meat for whatever reason I give myself is a great reason to eat it. Yeah. Um, I would stop yeah. because I would see the damage it's doing to the environment properly, you know. But on the planet, nobody even wants to see the damage that is happening, although there is well, like there's plenty of evidence that it's happening and there's a lot of scientific evidence that it's happening, but everyone wants to ignore the scientific evidence because they've got other addictions in play. And God's then not going to say, well, you know, I'm going to make another pretty environment for you because you destroyed this one. Yeah. Right. Mankind has to stop destroying this one and then God might help him make a pretty environment. Yes. Right. But, but if he refuses to stop the destruction, then why would God act at all? Mm. God can't act mm -hmm. because if he did act he would then tell the people involved that their actions are, there's nothing wrong with their actions yeah yeah they'd get away with their actions so this is why it's important to understand that God is always trying to to see if he did was engaged in repairing a problem would humans continue to make that problem worse mm. or would he even be helping humans make the problem worse? Right. Well, anyone who's been an actual physical parent would hopefully see that... With their children. <laughs> with their children, that if, got, if you take away the effects of their unloving actions, you not only don't teach them, you know, cause and effect, but you actually promote that. Yeah, you promote their unloving behaviour. Yeah. Yes, so... So God's not going to do that. Mm. So there are times when God will, uh, you know, help humans remove the effect of their actions. But, but obviously, if humans continue to cause an action and then say, why, why isn't God stepping in? Yeah. Then God's not going to do anything under those circumstances. And this is the reason why God allows wars. Mm. Humans keep choosing it. God, God's not going to step in until humans stop choosing it. And it's the same with environmental degradation. Humans keep choosing it. God's not going to step in until humans stop choosing it. Same with uh, intergender emotional uh, damage and issues, you know, where there's abuse to, to women genders, or men yeah. across genders. Humans choose to engage it. God's, God's not going to stop doing it, force you to stop doing it. You've got to stop doing it. Yeah. And 
you know, it's the same with the with the harm of children on the planet. You know, there's there's what is it around 50 million and children die every year of starvation. Yeah. Like what a terrible tragedy. But it's not a tragedy. <laughs> like what, what us calling it a tragedy is not right. It's actually a purposeful dis decision made by collective humanity. Mm -hmm. It should never occur. Mm -hmm. So it's not a tragedy. It's a choice being made by humans. Mm -hmm. And, to, uh, you know, those children can't be helped by God until you stop doing it. Right. When I say can't be helped, God's attempting to help them through mm -hmm. the law and through the operation of his ministering spirits and so forth. He's trying to help these children. But we are doing more damage to them than what the repair can occur yeah uh, in in the case in that case so this is where we've got to be very careful we have a tendency to blame god for a lot of things when reality is they're just the effects of our own bad behavior yes yeah. <laughs> so god's honoring our free will and honoring our ability to create mm -hmm. and so doesn't while the as you've said the compensatory laws and all of God's loving laws are attempting to destroy or break down the unloving creations. Mm -hmm. God just doesn't magically remove them. No, God can't because, uh, because if God did, then we would not see the relationship between cause and effect and therefore not have the compensatory effects in operation and therefore not correct our behaviour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and really, while we talk about becoming self-responsible, you and I, teach about that god's really already made us self-responsible yes yeah, so self-responsibility isn't like a choice <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the gift of free will has enforced it yes we could say yeah whether we're aware of it or not yeah. the gift of free will has enforced us to be self-responsible and the laws of compensation ensure self-responsibility will occur yeah uh, whether it's now or in the future uh, we, that we feel the consequences or perceive the consequences of it yeah it is happening right now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And our final point was that God actually expects humans to remove from ourselves the causes of our unloving behaviour mm. and the and to to really grow and foster the causes of our loving behaviour, yes. doesn't he? So you, you think about it, the, if you think about a relationship between a parent and a child, it's one thing for the child to say sorry, quite another thing to feel it if it's done something wrong. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, as adults, we have this terrible habit of saying sorry <laughs> yeah. and not actually feeling it. Yeah. Right? Obviously, because of how we've been taught as a child many times. And, and, and God is saying to us, no, you can stop your action if you want and say sorry, but at some point you're going to have to feel sorry before I'm going to accept mm -hmm. that you've actually corrected yourself. Mm -hmm. And really, the processes of forgiveness and repentance are the quickest and most effective ways to remove unloving causes and promote loving of causes, course. aren't they? Of yeah. course, yeah. Which is why this is, this is so relevant that's right. through this, our discussion. Yeah, yeah. This, we'll see as we go along, we'll see more and more the relevance of compensation mm -hmm. and how it affects the laws associated with forgiveness and repentance. Because obviously other things kick in too, besides compensation, there's rede redemption of humankind, which compensation is driving. But there's also the transformation of humankind, which compensation does not drive. There's other laws that drive that. And so, but, but the forgiveness and repentance processes are all involved in the redemption of humanity. Mm -hmm. And you can have a fast way, fast ways of engaging them, or very, very slow ways of engaging them. And unfortunately, most of humanity has, when it comes to spiritual and emotional side of our lives, yes. are very, very slow mm. in engaging the law. When it comes to the physical part of our life, ironically, we are a, a bit more pro pro creative, you know, proactive, proactive, yeah, uh, in in engaging the law, but but. But when it comes to the emotional and spiritual side, unfortunately, we're often the complete opposite. Mm. Very resistive, in fact. Mm. 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 Yeah, I still don't know if we're that proactive when it comes to the physical side of things. Uh, well, Unless I'm talking it... more about the ones that impact upon us personally. So, for example, if I'm getting fat, the average person would go, oh, I need to go on a diet. You know? <laughs> uh, sooner or later, you know, I'll need to do something about this you know, if I'm getting unhealthy. You, know, you feel the effects of your personal behaviour upon yourself 
and then you want to correct it. But unfortunately, we're not very focused on correcting behaviour that harms others mm. uh, or the environment or our relationship with God or our love of self. Mm -hmm. and, and these are the things that are having a very high amount of pain and suffering associated with them and that cause a large amount of pain and suffering for humanity generally. Yeah. And unless we learn to correct those things, then we're not going to improve the condition of humanity generally very much at all. Yeah, yeah. Mm.